Like we may all know, the ideal gas is a hypothetical or call it a theoretical gas with preset conditions. However, this hypothetical ideal gas is a good approximation of how many gases tend to behave. In today's session, we explore how to derive the ideal gas equation or call it the general gas equation. Coming up. Now, of course, we all know that there are three gas laws and right before us we have an expression for Boyle's law. We definitely come up with the ideal gas equation from, from the three gaseous laws, the Boyle's law, the pressure law, and Charles's law. Now, Boyle's law, like I had earlier stated in our previous sessions, pressure is inversely proportional to volume. And this is how the expression is that PV is equal to a constant. That is the expression for Boyle's law. Then we have the expression for the pressure law, that pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. And this is how it comes to conclude that P over T it gives us a constant k. This is our second equation. Then we have our third equation that velocity, that volume of a, of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature and V over T is going to give us k. This is Charles's law and this is our third expression. So we are going to get these three expressions and we are going to multiply them all. When we multiply all of them, then we shall end up with the ideal gas equation. And this is how we do it. First equation was PV is equal to K. So we get PV over K is going to be equal to K. Of course, we are going to multiply this by the second equation. So we get our second equation. That's our second equation. So we are going to multiply P over T right there. So our first expression PT, multiply that by P over T. P over T and also the K, multiply that by K on that side. So we go ahead and multiply the third equation as well. Our third equation is V over T, so we multiply that by V over T is going to be equal to K. We multiply that by K also. So when we multiply those, we end up with uh, this and that. P times P is P squared. Multiply that by V squared. Divide that by T squared is going to be equal to K to the power 3. Uh, this is the same as saying PV over T. All this is squared is going to give us k to the power 3. So to remove this square sign, it becomes PV over T. This thing is squared is going to be equal to k to the power 3. This, this goes with that. You remain with PV over T going to give us the square root of k to the power 3. Now this, the square root of k to the power 3 is still a constant. So the ideal gas equation zeroes down to PV over T is going to give us a constant. That is the ideal gas equation. Now here, now when we're dealing with one mole of, a, of an ideal gas, this constant has a special name. That special name is what we are calling the universal molar gas constant, which we have denoted as R. In other words, like the writer up here says, for one mole of an ideal gas, the constant here that we got earlier is known as the universal molar gas constant and it's always denoted by r and uh, definitely when we make this a flat equation by multiplying t on both sides we will end up with pv is equal to r t of course here we remember we're dealing with one mole of an equation but now what if it's not just one mole if it's less than two moles or three moles it means that we introduce a val the value of n here that for n moles of an ideal gas, PV is equal to nRT, where n represents the number of moles of that gas, and that is the ideal gas equation. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Ksembo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.